Hey guys, Rick here. Earlier today, I interviewed a guy who is living the dream, getting paid to make games for a living as an indie game developer. He and his buddies started out making games for fun and then on the side, they had a game that did really well that allowed them to quit their day jobs and make games full time. So settle in for the interview with Henrik Johansson from Mediocre and I talked to him all about his game Does Not Commute and his success as an indie game developer and how you can succeed as well at making games for a living. What have you found people have told you what's remarkable about your game? I guess, like, especially that core idea of you racing against yourself, sort of. We didn't, we wanted people to discover that by themselves. So we didn't, there's no information about that in the actual game. You just have, you just find out eventually. And I think that's something that people really appreciated because it was kind of this epiphany that comes some people they can drive maybe 10 cars and still don't understand that they drive all of the cars right sometimes it takes a long time for people to understand that but that just makes it more funny um, and it's so rewarding to see that reaction sort of and maybe the fact that you can rewind that that's what makes the game unique what gives it its personality uh, because otherwise it would be a, a top-down driving game. There's nothing else to it. You know, we're in a small team. We've just been two people all this time. At the point, working with contractors for things like music and level design. But still, it's the core team is just two people. And now, uh, just a month ago, we uh, started wor working with one more person. So the team has grown with, uh, <laughs> with a lot. Uh, we released our first game in fall of 2011, and it's been our uh, it's only income ever since. So we've been really fortunate, I think. When we were kids, we were trying to make games after school, back in the mid-90s. Uh, and, you know, it just didn't work out. We were too young, and the market was very different back then as well. Uh, then when the iPad came out, we decided to, just for a nostalgia sake, for old time's sake, we wanted to make a game just for fun. And I think the only um, the only thing we really agreed on was that whatever we do, we're going to finish it because all those games we did way back is left them, you know, uh, unfinished, and it's just a lot of frustration uh, involved, and it kind of feels pointless if you're never going to finish anything. So we, we had our minds set to it. But, you know, even, even back in 2010, when we started the first game, it was, the market was very saturated. So we didn't really feel like we really had a chance of succeeding in the games industry. So we, um, we didn't have that as a target, really. We just wanted to make a game that we uh, could be proud of and that we would, you know, enjoy. Um, but as development sort of progressed, we felt that we probably had a good shot of making it popular. So we really gave, gave it our best shot. And it kind of just took off for us. And we uh, sort of quit our day jobs and started working, making games full time after that. Can you map out for us the, the time for your major milestones for, for Does Not Commute uh, in terms of how long you took to prototype, uh, how long you took to actually work on it and develop it, and then how long it took to launch it and then the marketing process, just in terms of timelines and, and focus for those things? We probably prototyped for almost two months, and it was pretty frustrating because we wanted to make a smaller game, and you know, and we, we kind of felt like we wanted to move away from our previous games. They had been a bit cartoony, and you know, we kind of wanted to move away from that style and do something a bit more mature and interesting, but still crazy. Um, so we prototyped probably 10 different ideas for about two months. And so I think it was, yeah, sometime in October, we finally decided we're gonna give this idea our best shot and really work on it and polish it. It became sort of the game that it is today around Christmas last year. Um, we had, um, yeah, three more months, no, four more months of like content development and polish and the marketing stuff. Um, since we're a small team, we kind of have to do it all, all at the same time. Um, and honestly, we, didn't, we, we don't do a lot of marketing. Um, 
it's even now after five, five years, it's kind of hard to figure out what, what, what works and what doesn't work. Um, I guess at this point, we just, we do as much as we can. We try to keep good relationships with Google and Apple. And that's pretty much what we can do. Okay. So, uh, so it sounds like about four months, you're saying uh, two months of prototype and then the game in its current shape was, you're saying Christmas, so it's about four months and then another few months of working on it and getting the content and getting it all ready for launch, yeah. so about maybe seven or eight months working on it. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, and you're saying you didn't really do much in the way of marketing, just good relationships with Apple and Google. Um, you know, the kind of marketing we usually do is, you know, we send promo codes to reporters and stuff like that. We make a teaser trailer and a, like a release trailer, and usually we work with a PR firm or a PR person around the launch, around the launch to maybe set up some interviews or uh, just send out more promo codes and things like that. So I, I think that's what we usually do. There is nothing very complicated about it. What's the experience you've created for the player? What's the feeling or the mood or the emotion or when I'm playing the game, how do I feel? What's my experience? Well, there's a little uh, sense of frustration, I think, but there's a lot of comedy in there. I mean, they have these crazy little stories and just the fact that you constantly have to avoid yourself and plan ahead. We want it to, want it to be a funny game. When you started working on, on this game in particular, what was the biggest problem you had to overcome? Just figuring out um, something that wouldn't be completely deterministic. And like, since you can rewind your cars, you just keep trying. So you need to have a penalty somehow. Mm -hmm. And we tried many different ways to incorporate that. But that was really, really the biggest challenge for the game because it, it kind of crippled the game if we didn't have one. But at the same time, any kind of penalty we could come up with was just so frustrating that. Um, and it still is a bit frustrating. But if we didn't have that, it would just be like a sandbox game. You could just keep trying forever. And that would, no, that would be even worse. So that for sure was the biggest challenge for us. One thing we're at least trying to do differently is to uh, not just rush into the prototype, but actually think about it more, more before we uh, start working on it. So when we come up with a new idea or an idea that changes what the prototype would be, um, we would carefully think about it and maybe do some sketches and drawings and figure out what it would be and you know, think about every possible situation sort of. Um, whereas a few years ago, I think we just had like a, usually started with a very, uh, Make a very rough idea, and we just maybe if we just start working on it, it'll come to us and it'll work itself out. And it usually doesn't. It usually takes a very long time before it works out, and I don't know. So I think that's what we try to do differently now. It's just think about it more before we actually start, you know, making a solid prototype that's actually playable. Final question I have for you today. What is the single most useful tool or technique or approach or idea or piece of advice, <clears throat> pardon me, that you would give to other indie developers out there who are looking to succeed at making games? This is also, this is a very good question. Uh, it's oh, also, pen and paper is the best. I mean, just think about things, talk to your friends and your coworkers and discuss things, really think about it. Just, um, yeah, it's good to really sit and think and don't rush into things, even though it's what I always want. But um, yeah, it's, it's important to hold yourself back. Okay. That's what I had perhaps to think. Um, I know a lot of people, they, their ideas have a tendency to just explode and become way too big to manage. It's, it's a challenge to think small and manageable, I think, for projects. I think a lot of people, they make their, their uh, favorite game. And that can be a dangerous thing to do, unless you want to have work on your game for years and years. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you to Simon, I think, from Simogo, who who wrote the stories for the game.